Hey guys, it's Ex Machina here again with another video. We're here to do a breakdown of one of my favorite tracks, Make Me Bad. This track honestly came together um, after many renditions of this style of music that I've been producing. Uh, I call it Dark Lo-Fi Glitch, really. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but um, that's kind of the music that we're making. Very weird. Uh, as you've heard some of my other tunes and if you've watched like some of my other videos you see that I do like a lot of like organic mixing uh, get a lot of cool sounds organic sounds uh, from my modular synth but today we're gonna actually break down uh, what I do before this uh, before the music goes into that whole process of live performance uh, so this again is my track called make me bad this was a single that released not too long ago and this is like in the style of dark lo-fi glitch something that i've been trying to curate over the past few months here all right so we're gonna get into it so the first thing is in the like as far as the elements go uh, before we even start i'm gonna just play just a little bit of the beginning just so you can hear it uh, i recommend listening to the whole track first but we'll play a clip of this uh right here So we'll just get into that right away then. So I typically use the same bass and kick in every track. Um, so I'm going to just solo this real quick. So, so the kick is actually a uh, sample that I got from a uh, lo-fi pack. Uh, I actually EQ'd it quite a bit and then shortened it, and then you can see that none of them actually sit on the beat. And then I also have the kick pushed two milliseconds to the right, so this gives it just like a slow, laggy feel. And then for the bass, I use a contact instrument to get this. You can really use any bass you want, but I just use like a contact instrument. It's very simple, but the kick and bass typically is the same for me. And then for the leads, this is where the chunk of all of the instruments are. We'll solo these first. So as you can hear, there's quite a bit of like glitchy sounds in some of the synthesizers. Now that's the style that I'm trying to go for, uh, and really we try to keep it simple, right? And so I get maybe like the Rhodes, I get my actual sine wave synthesizer and then like a guitar. I'll play a bunch of notes, and then what I'll do is I'll freeze and flatten every one of these tracks, and then I'll just go in and then do some, some editing. So for example, I have like this synthesizer, right? Just a sine wave. And what I do is I take that and I stretch it out. So you can see whenever you like double click something, you can make sure it's on warp and then on beat mode. And then what you can do is you can press this X2 or sometimes it has like this uh, double button um, or like colon two. And if you press it twice, it'll actually stretch out the sound and then you can reverse it. And once you do, you get something like this. So right off the bat, you can create textures using the sounds that you've already made, and this will fill in the gaps. Less is more, obviously, for this style, so you want to have enough gaps to add the ear candy, which we'll get to in the later part of the video. 
now the next element is going to be the guitar here. So. It's very simple. So now again with the elements of the leads and the kick and bass, we can start off right here. Now one thing that I try to do is I try to make sure that uh, when I EQ everything, the low like the lows I get rid of and then for the top end I try to keep it as minimal as possible because to create this style, you don't want the snares to be too harsh, you don't want the kicks or the bass to be too harsh. Really, you don't want even the hats to be too harsh. You want to be able to have everything uh, everything in a soft realm um, so it's easier to listen to, especially when you have all the ear candy. So let's continue to the next element here. So we have the snare. So as far as the snare goes, I keep it the same in every track. So I'll have like this style snare. It's different on every hit, at least for the first, like the four, and then I'll copy that over. Now, what I do to give all of my drums like a little flare, I use Valhalla Supermassive, and I'll drag on some of the sounds just for a little bit. This will give you a different dimension to all of your all of your drums. Very handy to keep things fresh. And I do the same thing with the hi-hats. So you can see over here, I have super massive. I have a bunch of automation here. And if we solo it, you can hear that it changes just a little bit, but it keeps it fresh throughout the track. It doesn't sound the same. And so this is how you get that glitchy sound, right? You just use a lot of time delay, warp effects, and then you just kind of shift things around to give it like a wavy stop motion glitch feel. So now if we move forward, uh, you can see that we have the vocals here. We have two sets of vocals, and I love using this effect called analog collapse. This essentially echoes So let's hear it again. I use analog collapse pretty much on all of my vocals, uh, or most of them that I want that kind of effect on. It just really opens up the stereo mix. So we can even see what we did with the other vocals here. Same thing, analog collapse. And you're gonna wanna make sure that all of your instruments are side chained to the kick and the snare. I try to do at least a little bit of both, um, just so you can let those parts breathe. Because with the snare, the EQ is very soft. So you want to give that a little bit of room and let everything else duck whenever that hits. All right, now moving forward, this is like the signature Ex Machina sound is what I call it because I literally use it in every track. It's a bunch of twinkles. And so that doubles as my transition effects as well. And I use it as percussion in some, some of my tracks. So the way that I achieve this, I use Treetone. It's a plugin that comes with Ableton 11, uh, Max for Live. Pretty sweet, you should definitely check it out. But what I do is I create a track and I record my Treetone generated sound. And then what I do is I run an audio process that with any sort of frequency shifter like Hala Frequency Echo. And then I record that on a separate channel, which then gives me these neat, neat like sounds here. 
and then I go through and then I clean it up. And then once I do, I have like this whole section of just ear candy is what I call it. And then I'll do any sort of stereo mix by using like Brower Motion stereo. Uh, and then I'll even side chain it. And then once you have that, you have pretty much filled up all of the space for the most part, right? The only thing that we didn't go over is the crash. So I have like a reverse crash right over here. And then I have the crash, which has like this little echo to it. But the rest of the sound, uh, the spectrum, the high end at least, is filled up with this right here, which is the effects, the vinyl effects. And I always love doing a glitchy vinyl effects. You can hear that it's kind of glitchy. And the way that I achieve this is uh, by stretching it and then reversing it or chopping it up. Uh, but then getting this interesting sound. And you'll hear this through a lot of my productions. It just gives me um, something nice to listen to. I mean, most of the time I make this, uh, I really started creating this style just to have a flavor of music to listen to while I edit my photos and stuff. Uh, really just consistently making this style has created this interesting body of work that I have now, um, which I plan to expand on. So... Yeah, that was pretty much it for the first breakdown video that I have. I appreciate you guys. Uh, this song, again, is called Make Me Bad. Definitely check it out. It is on all streaming platforms. Uh, so yeah, much love. See you guys.